Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the amazing Wilson Cleveland. Wilson, how are you doing today, man? Good. How about you? I'm doing very well. Been very excited about this. So, um, before we get into the reason why you're here, however, I do want to talk about you a little bit. Um, you are an award winning producer, writer, showrunner, and actor, perhaps best known for creating and starring in YouTube's first ever brand sponsored scripted series. Yes. And seminal streaming originals for Hulu, USA, and Lifetime. Um, now, here's something crazy for me. In 2017, you teamed with Ron Howard and Brian Grazier's new form digital studio to create the revenge drama Intricate Vengeance. Um, Correct. That was for Amazon. So what was it like, you know, being a part of Ron Howard's obviously huge name, being a part of that studio, creating something for that? What was that like for you? Oh, man, that was a dream come true. I mean, I, I was very lucky in that I had worked with uh, one of the producers already years ago on another show. Um, and they were doing, uh, they were sort of commissioning a series of pilots. And uh, they came to me and said, can you create, you know, an idea for a show for us? Um, and I was like, hell no. Uh, <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> Ron who? Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, absolutely. And so I had been kicking around this idea for a long time about, um, this idea of like this underground revenge for hire kind of organization, um, that kind of were like crime victims who were sort of coming together to like get revenge for other people. Um, sure. and so I really liked that idea and they responded to it and they, you know, they moved very, very quickly because back in like in the digital days, like you moved very quickly. So they got you the money, boom, shot it. Um, and it was, it, I mean, it was incredible. It was incredible. Um, and everyone over there was fantastic. And it was, you know, I, I, it was probably the best quote unquote Hollywood experience that I'd had. Um, and it was a lot of fun to do. We actually had, uh, one of one of the guys who does uh, makeup on Walking Dead, we got nice. him to do um, makeup for us. One of the main characters uh, has really bad burns, and we actually had the guy from The Walking Dead come in and do the makeup, and that was like unbelievable. It was just it was amazing. Yeah, that's incredible, man, and I'm really happy for you to see those dreams come true. I mean, that's got to be just an amazing feeling to see all these things that you wanted your whole life actually come true. And not only that, but you've won awards for some of the things you've done. Um, yes. Winning Webbies, you've won um, five. You're a five-time Webby winner, right? I think, yes, yes, over over and, years, but yes. Right, right, but um, writing and starring in the low-budget horror film Kept Man, like that to me, like you won a Webby for that. And then you received a streaming nomination opposite of David Arquette for Best yes. Actor in the YouTube Horror Anthology Black Box TV. So um, obviously, when you think of David Arquette, you think of a giant in the horror world, obviously, with the Scream franchise and uh, maybe even think of WCW wrestling. But when you think of him, you think of him as someone you've shared. Or never been kissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> or I could go on. But yeah, no, definitely. It was we actually I didn't act with him when I said I was on it. Like he beat me. So like we were like we were in nominated in the same category. Um, he had done a show for Crackle called Cleaners. Oh, okay. Um, and he won and beat me bad. But it was like just being in that same the same you know, the streamies. Him. Yeah, like the streamies at the time were like, you know, kind of like the Emmys for for web, you know, for digital streaming. Um, sure. before it was super everywhere but like it but that was you know i was very humbled and starstruck oh i i bet man and it's still incredible yeah. it's still an incredible thing to even be nominated for something like that it, it's a you know a feather in the cap man and yeah something i want to talk about again real quick your youtube channel um, the way that you create your trailers is this is actually how i found you and i think that they're amazing the work that you do on them and i want to tell everybody you don't have to go very far to find all this because all of Wilson's social media links as well as his YouTube link are right down here in the description. So make sure you're subscribing to that. Make sure you're following him on social media. But what was it like for you to come up with the idea for these trailers? Like um, most recently for us at the time of recording, it's the Halloween ends trailers yeah. that you're cutting together. Uh, what gave you the idea to start doing this? You know, it's funny. So when COVID uh, kind of 
took over everything and we had lockdowns and you know there, there wasn't a whole lot going on um one of the ways that i um kind of chose to get my creative you know my creative i guess angst out <laughs> was to i've always i mean i should say i've always loved cutting trailers i've cut trailers for pretty much every project i've done no matter who's who it's for i've always sort of made it um my one of my con conditions that i let me cut the trailer because i I have a thing about getting people excited and I know what people kind of want to see sure. um, that will get them to watch this thing. So, you know, I have always had, um, I had not been in a position previously where I was, I, I mean, I have a lot of horror movie ideas. Like I made Captain Man, as a short film and uh, a couple other things, but that was not my, my oeuvre really. Um, but I've, I'd always had ideas for, um, you know, for other franchises that I grew up watching and that have been, you know, therapeutic for me, um, what have you. And I was like, I would love to see if I can put these ideas, you know, into a trailer. You know, I oh. certainly am not the first person in the world to ever do concept trailers. Um, there are many people who do it better than I do, but I was kind of the only one who really was doing it for horror in a serious way. Um, and so the first one I did, was uh, for Scream 22, um, Scream 5 at the time. And I had had this idea for Scream for many, many years. Um, this idea of, you know, Stu being alive and um, the killers being, uh, there being multiple killers, like a cult. Um, I'm not the only person that ever had that idea. Um, I also know that was the original idea for Scream 3. Um, and, but I was like, I wonder if I could, you know, make a little mini movie as a trailer, um, yeah. just for, for myself. And also they had just announced uh, Scream 5 was uh, going into production and Arquette had signed on. And I was like, oh, you know, let's see what it look like. So I took my very first crack at making this trailer and looking back on it now, it's like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> but like, it, it was literally, I was so focused on this being exact like if you go back and watch it i mean i will say the best thing about this video was the thumbnail so i i, I got this great shot of lillard um from twin peaks uh sitting in a car and i was like okay how do we make him look like Stu would look now and i found this photo of jigsaw from the punisher movie like the second one and I literally <laughs> took the scars and burns from him, put them on Matthew Lillard's face. So I had this thumbnail of Matthew Lillard with scars all over his face and burns yeah. became this, like, it got picked up everywhere, like Matthew Lillard returning to Scream 5. Um, but it was like, <laughs> but you know what? I tell you what, I ended up being right about a couple plot points. I mean, like, I made this in June, 2020. Yeah. Um, and I had predicted that there would be a significant event at the Mocker House. I predicted that it would be about toxic fandom. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a couple things like that. And it ended up being like, and I, first of all, I thought no one is going to watch this. Um, I mean, I, my whole, most of my career has been about promoting stuff on YouTube, rarely for myself, rarely right. things that I'd made just for me where someone wasn't paying me to make it. So I thought, oh, you know, who's this dork? Let's just make this. <laughs> and it turned out like people really liked it. Um, and so I thought, okay, I have more ideas. And a lot of these ideas and my interest in doing this have this whole kind of like the, this reboot renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I would necessarily have been as passionate as into it as I am if these franchises from my childhood and I'm guessing your childhood were not being yep. resurfaced and, you know, reintroduced in this way. Right. Um, and so what makes the trailers that I've done so far appealing to fans of is that I speak the language. Um, I love a good Easter egg. I pepper Easter eggs throughout all of them. Like that first scream, trailer I did, I took a shot from uh, 
the Santa Clarita diet with Drew Barrymore and Timothy Oliphant. And there's a, yeah. a photo of them. And I put that in there. It's like little things like that, that people are like, right. oh my God. It's like, they, they really appreciate it. Um, and then, you know, I just started having these ideas. Uh, I knew what, I knew that Halloween Kills was coming. Knew nothing about it um, yeah. in terms of like the plot really, except that it was like a Halloween continuation and whatnot. And I knew who was going to be in it. And so again, I ended up kind of like, there's some shot, there's a shot in the very first Halloween Kills concept trailer that I did of Anthony Michael Hall sitting at a bar and like taking a drink and looking up at a television. And that shot that I used is from the show, The Blacklist. Cause I was, I need to okay. like look for current clips of these people and whatever. And that shot, ended up obviously being in not my shot obviously but it's like well, yeah I, but like i was like well how are all these people going to figure out that he's back they're all going to have to be together mm -hmm. and they're probably going to be like at a bar and they're probably going to see it like on tv right and so i was like kind of like they did in halloween four and so um that shot and a couple of those beats were ended up in the movie and it's weird. It's sort of like, how did it, I just kind of have this idea? But anyway, so there are other franchises, obviously, like Elm Street, Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. the classics, um, you know, that, the, you know, there's an exorcist coming. Um, yeah. And uh, so I was like, well, I don't know a whole lot about as much about like malignant or, you know, this, you know, something that are more current but I love me a good requel um, mm -hmm. because I can create these trailers that are kind of steeped in the history and the legacy that fans like us will understand, but also sure. appeal to other, you know, other people. You know, and they, did, they weren't all winners, <laughs> um, but um, you know, sometimes they are. And, you know, and sometimes people involved with the projects themselves happen upon these videos and um that's crazy and enjoy them i mean so there was i i mentioned to you that there was a crazy story that i could tell yes. so like um one of the recent uh videos i did was i took the uh i created i recreated the blumhouse halloween tv spots right yeah like for 2018 halloween kills halloween ends and I created, recreated them in the style of Halloween 78, Halloween 2, and Halloween 3. Um, like, and so I was like, that's really, you know, because that's fun for me too, because it's like, that's another whole connect, connecting the past, present, and all that. Um, and just, I also love the idea of, of showing kind of younger fans what it felt like to watch these commercials, you know, when, when the franchise was first coming out or whatever. Um, and so... I was sort of checking the analytics and I saw that uh, Paul Brad Logan, who wrote Halloween Ends yeah. um, with David Gordon Green um, and, and the rest of them had tweeted this out, tweeted out my TV spots. That's and said, awesome. And said, you know, I just lost you. There you are. Um, and said, so P Paul Brad Logan tweeted this out and, and said, you know, I'm 10 again. And I was like, holy shit. You know, this guy just tweeted out. So I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. And so I made an Instagram reel of the, the Halloween 3 uh, spot. And I sent it to, uh, to Ryan Turek at Blumhouse. Thinking yeah. he's never in a million going to watch this. Like, you know, I've never met him. Um, I know people who know him. But I was like, I just... DM'd it, just, hey, thought, you know, this is fun. And then, like, this is my way of saying thank you to you guys for taking good care of this franchise. And um, I know that you, Ryan, um, and the rest, you did this because you're fans. And so I thought it would be cool for you to see your work in the style of what inspired you to make it, right? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> 10 minutes later, I, he DMs me back. And he's like... Um, this is awesome. I'm sitting here with David, Danny, Jason, the whole team. They happened to be in a meeting when I sent this to him. 
and they all watched it together. That's awesome. And I was That's like, incredible. I mean, see, you got, and they, were, and they were like, how did you, like, that was, you know, that's really cool. And that, you know, th these are so awesome. That's so fun. They loved like, because as you know, as you may or may not know, I'm guessing you do. David Gordon Green loves Halloween three. Um, oh, yeah. And which is why, um, you know, Silver Shams is, uh, is canon now. Right. And I was like, well, you know, they made it canon. I had to do a full tribute. And so they, re I mean, they, they really liked it. And I, I mean, I just died at that. I think that that is mm -hmm. so cool um you know what are the odds but that was fun for them and i and from what i hear jamie lee curtis has also seen it so that's like the I biggest dream come true yeah for sure you know, I mean, one, like, I mean, for sure it's like you, you know you do it to let your i mean i've worked with so many people you know professionally who i've admired and been a fan of and whatnot but there's this there's a certain kind of like you know if you're connected to these people like from childhood and, and or whatnot that you just really um it's a huge it's kind of it, you just kind of want to show them like look look what I made you it's like if you know I know right. you have kids look what I made um and you just want them to be like oh that's very nice you know and it's it's great when you're able to show appreciation and the people you're showing it to actually see it right so and it's it's amazing because, like I said, um, I'm a huge fan of Halloween three as well. So that first trailer really did catch my eye, you know, with the song and everything. like it's just so great. And if you guys haven't seen them already, like I said, the links are down here in the description. So make sure you are clicking them so you can check out everything that he's doing. Subscribe to the YouTube. I promise you, it's worth it. Um, now we've talked a little bit about what you're doing now, but here for a yep. little bit, Wilson, I would like to go back to the past and talk okay. about what got you started in the horror genre your first horror movie and Wilson, yes. the first horror movie that you watched was Halloween 2 1981 I did not watch it in 1981 um <laughs> there you go boogeyman. <laughs> Halloween 2 um at a it had just come out I mean I'm old but I'm not that old but like but it had just come out on video so it was like 1983 maybe um <laughs> It came out on video and I saw it at a sleepover before I had ever seen the original. Okay. And I was nine. So you guys can do the math. I don't look my age, but you know. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I'm at this sleepover and I'm watching this movie and they, you know, they put it on and everyone else at this sleepover had seen the first one okay. on video. And some of them had even seen the second one on video. I had never seen, this is my first, I think the only horror movie I'd ever seen, not in full, but like clips of was like Jaws. Sure. Um, and I think I'd seen, I've seen, I'd seen parts of The Thing, um, but never really anything all the way through. So they put this on and obviously if you know, it's like Halloween 2 kind of, you, you pick up like halfway through the night. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, I don't really know what's going on now. Why is this man in her house, not her house? You know, but I kind of didn't care. I didn't want to act like I hadn't seen it. But I'll tell you what, and I, I, I know I, I said this to you. I don't think I would have become as much of a like Halloween stan as I am or be afraid, as afraid of Michael Myers as I still am today if I had seen the movies in the original order. And sure. I'll tell you why. Because the original, obviously, classic, mm -hmm. clearly. As a nine-year-old, I don't know if I would have been as scared. Just in it's terms of the movie It's a slow itself. burn. It's a slow burn, and it's, and it's subtle, and there's no gore, there's no, like, it's more of a thriller, really. Mm -hmm. um, but being introduced to Michael Myers, being introduced to like the Dick Warlock, Michael Myers. And again, Nick Castle, OG, I get it. But Dick Warlock, the way it, the mask was on his face, like he just, it, he looked scarier to me and he's way more brutal. And yeah. it's just like being introduced to this character when he's, you know, kind of being ramped up already. Like, so like the, the first one was this massive hit 
Second one, I they did the same, like kind of like what they do with Halloween Kills, they kind of had to up the ante. So being introduced to him that way first, I had nightmares about Michael Myers, and I still do actually, mm -hmm. um, because of Halloween too. Right. Everything from the way he is, the way, I mean, the way he looks, the way he moves, um, and Carpenter's score is so much synthier and darker um and so 80s and like and just <laughs> and, i mean really and like even everything about it is just is just amped up um and that movie terrified me so much that i had to watch it every day <laughs> because <laughs> which is so weird it's like it, you remember that it's like if it's it'll scare you the first time yeah might scare you the second time but then it becomes a habit. Sure. Where you don't want to be scared. It becomes the predictability of it. And it just becomes, you know, these slashers, if you, if you gravitate to slashers, there's a reason people watch Halloween, Friday the 13th, what have you, hundreds of times without right. being scared of it anymore. You know, it's like, you just sort of feel like, oh, okay, this is now like a safe a safe space now, like it's predictable. I know what's going to happen, you know, and all that. Right, um, comfort. It comfort for sure. And so I then watched it, you know, once it, once I'd watched it on, 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 on video, I, every time it was on TV, I watched it, you know, we rented, I made my parents rent it like all the time. Yeah. Um, and they'd be like, they would get concerned. They'd be like, um, we're a little worried that, you know <laughs> that you like these Halloween movies so much, and there were at the time only two. And I remember watching Halloween three with my parents on HBO when it first came out, and my parents laughing at it. And I was like, "How dare you!" <laughs> um, and I made my dad take me to go see Halloween four in the theater. Um, so I mean, I've seen like I've seen sure in the theater. But yeah, and so that movie kind of really set me on a, I guess, a horror path, but I was never really into many other slashers. Um, okay. I, eventually, I eventually became into them. I like the ones everyone talked about at school were Friday the 13th because there was a new one every year. And so like, I think the first Friday the 13th I ever saw was part seven. Okay. Um, but then, of course, I've gone back and watched them all dozens of sure. times. But like, I was never as into that. It was always Halloween, mm -hmm. um, and I had so, like I bought the like my very first see this. I'm dating myself so bad, but like the <laughs> very first CD I ever bought was the I don't know how to pronounce it the Verasus Veras Sarah Bat whatever the Halloween Five score. Halloween yeah. five score, the very first CD I ever bought. Um, that's what, it, you know, that's how into it. But yeah, always, it was always Halloween. Oh, for sure. And I still have the um, Halloween, the OG Halloween score on cassette tape. Like, so I, Get def out. I definitely understand where you're coming from, man. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So um, Halloween two, like I said, I, this is the first time I've really gotten to talk about this movie on this podcast. And, uh, which scene from the film would you say was the one that affected you the most? <sighs> Boobs and burns. It is the hot tub scene. And I, I have to say, I just, last night actually, rewatched it, knowing I was you know, talking about this today. Yeah. I rewatched it um, on Peacock. And by the way, if you haven't watched Halloween 2 on Peacock, because it's a universal, um, there are things that I missed because they have a cut that looks a lot like I wasn't old enough to see it in the theater. They have like what looks like a theatrical cut. Um, there, I've seen that movie literally hundreds of times and there are things that I, and it's a very clear picture. I highly recommend go check it out. But anyway, so it is the scene where Karen and Bud are getting intimate in the therapy pool as one does. And uh, they, you know, and, and Michael kills Bud in the 
behind the frosted glass. This is so 80s. Like, you kill the naked dude behind the frosted glass. You come and kill. And then it, when he, he, you know, he turns the heat up in the, in the, in the therapy pool to, I think I was looking at the gauge. It was like 300 degrees. I was like, oh, like, there's no way it would have ever gone that much. But I get it. Right. Um, and, you know, he ends up dunking her in the, her face and pull. And I'll tell you why that scene in particular, first of all, as a nine-year-old, you know, for the boobs, she's of course topless. It's early eighties. Yep. You know, as a young gay kid, boobs, scary anyway. But so <laughs> I was, so I was like, you know, and it was just, it, I was thinking about it, I was like, why did this upset you so much? And I was like, oh God, it, because it's long. Like, yeah. it's like it, it takes a minute. And like, I don't like, I, I struggle with kills in horror movies where the victim has a minute mm -hmm. to like beg for their life or they become know, they humanized. Hold, exactly. Thank you. They humanize mm -hmm. it. You know, and, and this is a character that would never have been humanized in most other slashers, the topless nurse. Um, right. And I'm pretty sure that's why Judy Greer's name is Karen in Halloween 2018. Because anyway, neither here nor there. But <laughs> it, it's that it, it, it gives you enough time not only to, you know, hu humanize this character, but you can imagine what that would be like because at first you don't know what's happening you're like oh he's drowning her oh, oh no. no right it's worse um and it progresses and that's the thing that kills me it's like it progresses it's like oh okay we're fine oh no oh no don't put her oh my god and then he just keeps dunking her and i think that was upsetting because i didn't really understand what was going on at the time I'm like why is her skit like did he burn her face off but the end of that scene, I think, is what really, and it, it, I still kind of winced when I saw it last night. It's the way, and it's not, and it's not a, like a dummy. It's actually, I can pretty, you can pretty much, I think it's the actress herself, literally is just pulling her by her hair, you know, and top, like, just like putting her down and like, he just, you know, like a rag doll and, and throws yeah. her on the ground. And that part, I think, is what, and then the, the close-up shot, you know, of her face. And I'm pretty sure Carpenter wrote that scene or had it added into the movie um, afterwards. I think there's something to that extent. It was so brutal. That brutality is what made it stick with me. So it's like, not just what he did, but like, it's just, and then to see the way, because it was weird also because of the way that the, the, the care he took Mm -hmm. with his victim in the previous movie. So like, you know. Out the window. Yeah, carry it, like the way he carries Annie, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, to the, and, and you know, stages them nicely on the bed. <laughs> you know? And this was just, and remember, this is my first introduction to the character. And so like, sure. I think that's another why, it's, why it scared me. That's when I went back and watched the first one for the first time, I was like, what the hell? He was so <laughs> nice. He carried her. Like, you know, um, but, but that, it was the brutality, it was the visual, and it was the progression of it, and it was the humanization of it mm -hmm. when I was trying so hard to desensitize, you know, because right. when you're watching these movies for the first time, this is like me, I'm constantly like holding my stomach muscles and like just terrified. Um, and that movie, that scene really, that really messed me up. And like, I think I saw her maybe one or two years later, the actress, Pamela Susan Shoup, that's right. Um, like on an episode of Magnum PI or something like that. And I was like, ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> She's okay. She is okay. <laughs> She's okay. That's, thank God. Um, that's, that's what we were all I, hoping for. Yeah, I mean, that's actually, it's funny. Like, I, that's one another thing about horror movies. Like when I was a kid, when I would see, watch these movies and then they would show up later on another show. Mm -hmm. Like in Halloween 2, like Janet, Halloween 2, the Dr. Mixter. Yeah, she like ended up on Falcon Crest. I was like, I was like, I was like oh, 
there's like, and then there's comfort to like, okay, you're okay. She's not a dead candy striper. <laughs> she's, you know, she's running a winery. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so yeah, that, that scene and still when, when Halloween too. And so I was a little bit bummed out that like, it's no longer canon in the current mm -hmm. timeline. It is what it is, but right. that, I mean, that I still, I will, it's an unpopular opinion in, in Halloween circles. It is the scariest for me. Okay. Well, the I definitely scariest. think it's the most brutal outside of the Rob Zombie ones when it comes to the brutality of Michael's kills. Um, and I, I also think that this is a movie that me personally, I'm not a huge fan of Halloween too. I, I mean, like, but to be fair, I'm not a huge Halloween fan anyway. Um, I respect the franchise. I think it's a very good franchise. Really? I grew up, I grew up one of the Friday the 13th kids. And so like, okay. I didn't watch I Halloween. Yeah. I didn't watch Halloween until later on. Like we, me and you were kind of flip flopped. Like I didn't watch okay. Halloween until later on. And I always just kind of thought of him as like kind of boring white bread, stabby, stabby. There was nothing inventive, but now there would be no Jason realized, without Michael Myers. Well, well, now I'm older. I realize like that's actually scarier. You know, like he's yeah. just the guy next door. Like there's nothing supernatural or anything like that. It's just the guy next door that could go crazy. So I definitely have grown to have a deep love and appreciation for Halloween. And um, Halloween too, like I said, it's definitely brutal. Like it is super brutal. And Michael is just off kilter in this movie compared to uh, some of the other non-Rob Zombie ones. But uh, what would you say, we know what scene affected you the most, but what would you say your favorite scene from Halloween two is? Halloween 2. Hmm. My favorite scene. Uh, oh, probably. <laughs> no, for sure. It is. Oh, man. Okay, there are two. Can I have two? Okay. Yeah. Okay, the of first course. one is um, Jimmy slipping in Mrs. Alves' blood. When Jimmy finds. Mrs. Alves with the IV and it's dripping all over the floor and he slips and he falls. Um, but the one that I still love and I still kind of laugh is the scene in the very beginning um, when the next, the, the young girl hears Mrs. Elrod scream and she, she's on the girl, Alice who's on the phone and she comes back into the house and she's like, his wife's always picking on him. He probably got angry and decided to start beating her. It's, just, it's like that line. I'm like, oh my God, that's horrible. Like that line was just kind of funny to me in a way when I was a kid. But what I love about that scene, and I know that Carpenter, I think he even directed that scene um, where she's on the phone and the door opens behind her. I have a feeling that we see that recreated in Halloween Ends. Um, yeah. It's in the trailer. I wonder if that was intentional or whatnot. But that scene is the most, you know, Carpentarian, I think, of that whole movie. But I love that because it's so tense. And the way that he shot it, you know, looking up as she's walking into the room and that Michael, like, literally, like, flash mob jumps out. Um, like, I love that. And, and that... I didn't even know what the way that he shot the actual kill. You don't actually see him stab her, right? Um, and I didn't really know what had gone, what had happened. But I that I love that scene. That's a great scene mm -hmm. from from the from from the moment they cut from outside Mrs. Elrod's or the Elrod's house, and Michael's doing that his slow walk across the yard, and the way yeah. that um, that tracking shot of him walking, seeing. Alice go into her driveway and then the, the way it's a racking, it's a single tracking shot and then they pan back as she goes back into the house and he watches her through the window. That's just a great shot. Um, <laughs> that whole scene I think is fantastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know now what Halloween 2 means to you and how much it affected you being your first tour movie. But now yeah. I kind of want to throw you a little bit of a curveball here for a second. Okay. Uh, my little buddy Ghostface is here and he has a question for you. What's okay. your favorite scary movie, Wilson? <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, man. <sighs> favorite horror movie, single horror movie. Mm -hmm. That is so hard. It's going to be Halloween, the original Halloween. Okay. 
Well, and I mean, um, like I said, a lot of people, I've said this a lot. Um, I don't think that um, Michael may not be my favorite slasher. You know, he's not. And Halloween may not be my favorite franchise of all time. But what I can tell you is I believe that Psycho and Black Christmas started the slasher. Craze, oh, yeah. And I think that Halloween perfected it. Wherein, you know, Black Christmas and Psycho, you're not as much about the killer as you are the victims. And right. then Halloween comes and it it... it 50 50s that out you know in black christmas you see your killer's eyeball that's all you see you know through yeah. the door and it's just um, a dude then, no mask right and then psycho you have the mother you know and you see her for 30 seconds as she's she's getting taken down by the by the cop but in yeah. halloween you get this terrifying entity that is in your face all the time and he's brutal and gruesome so i think that those movies started With no the motive craze. i think halloween perfected it i think halloween is the perfect idea of what a slasher should be. And obviously it's I think created right. a cult following. For sure. And I will say that, you know, to your point, Halloween, the original is about the victims, really. <laughs> um, it, there's a little humanizing of, uh, you know, humanization of Michael, you know, you see he was a kid, but because he's such an emotionless entity who just kind of like glides in and out of shadows, you know, you're more concerned for the victims than you are more like rooting, rooting on the killer. And I think Jason sort of flipped, like Jason was the killer that you rooted for and people right. still do, you know? And like, Jason was just more metal, let's be honest. Like Jason's just more <laughs> metal. Um, and like, he just is. And like, people go to Friday the 13th movies wanting to see that carnage. You don't care about, you know, the eight different, you know, counselors or whatever. Right. You don't care as much. Like, you just want to see Jason, like, do his thing. Michael Myers is a little bit different, although they did shift that paradigm. Certainly Rob Zombie shifted that paradigm. But I think that paradigm shift started in, like, Halloween 4. I think they, they decidedly, I think, whereas Friday the 13th, originally was sort of just like catch up with Halloween. Yeah. I think when they relaunched Halloween 4 in the late 80s and 88, they were playing catch up to Jason at that point. And that was like when you first started seeing, and especially with like Halloween 6, like that was just like, you know, the gore and the violence, like that was them playing catch up, trying to, you know, adapt at the time. Yep. Um, but yeah, Psycho and Black Christmas, I would, I would definitely say they started, and I think Halloween cemented, and they, they're using this in their marketing, it cemented the final girl. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, that's something I don't think anybody can ever argue. And I think that, you know, Jamie Lee's probably the most well-known final girl, maybe behind Nev Campbell, Sydney. I think those yeah. are pretty neck and neck with each other. But Heather Langenkamp. Um, yeah, Heather Langenkamp's another one. Yeah. Um, for me, Jess Bradford, you know, in Black Christmas, I think she is just Olivia Hussey. I think Olivia Hussey. Yeah, I think she's my favorite of all time. And man. Margot Kidder, by the way, my favorite, actually my favorite movie, favorite movie, movie of all time is Superman, the 78 Superman. Okay. Yeah. So Black Christmas was very upsetting. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was a huge Lois Lane fan. I met Margot Kidder at Comic-Con one year and I flipped out. But yeah, I, Olivia Hussey was great because she was, you know, certainly one of the, and I also like um, uh, Sally Hardesty, the original Texas Oh, Texas Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Yeah, which I didn't see till it was much older, but um, but I do love Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas. Yeah, and we'll just leave it there. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was so upsetting for people who loved the original. Both of them, both of them, yeah. But yeah. really, the Blumhouse one. Mm. Yeah, um, <laughs> we don't even gotta get. That's a whole podcast. I won't even get into there, it. But um, yeah. before I let you go, I always ask the same question here. Um, what we're gonna okay. do is we're. I think I know the answer, but right. it's on my script, so I gotta ask the question. Okay. Um, we're gonna bounce back to Halloween two, and what we're gonna do here, Wilson, is we're gonna rank this on a skull count. Now we're not ranking this movie on acting, production, score, nothing like that. What we're doing here is strictly ranking this movie on how much it affected you. On first viewing, so zero nine, nine out of ten. <laughs> yes. Nine. I knew it. I knew it was coming. I mean, like nine. the movie is still affecting you to this day, where you're still having nightmares about the guy. You're still yeah. putting up 
uh, you know, you're making trailers for these movies. Like that's how much it affected you. So we're yeah. at the end of the third act. Now the credits are about to roll and the curtains about to drop, but before they do guys, there's some links down here that need some clicking. Make sure you're following on social media. Make sure you're subscribing on YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date with Wilson and everything he's doing. Uh, Wilson, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Sure. Uh, everybody else, as always, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon.